Hello and welcome to Big Shot Guides. My name is Jack, aka Janabinoli, and today we're going to be going over buildings in Sparta War of Empires. First off, we'll talk about artisans. Um, you start with one, and you can purchase up to four here in the construction tab with Drachmas. Um, this is going to allow you to build up to four buildings at once. You get one for each artisan. Um, it can be really useful later in the game when you need to build or upgrade more than one building at once. Next, we're going to go to your resource resource buildings. There are three main types. You have your forges, which produce bronze. Half of your bronze is collected to your warehouses, which we will touch on in a moment, and half can be collected by clicking the little bubbles that pop up over the building. Like bronze, timber also has the same feature. 50% is uh, collected to your, war your warehouses, and the other 50% is collected from the bubbles. Um, it is very good to upgrade these as high as you can, as soon as you can, because that will give you more resource production, allow you to build more buildings and more units. Over here uh, are your third and your final resource buildings, your farms. They produce grain. Um, you will also want to upgrade these. You might want to upgrade these a little bit faster, because each unit has a grain consumption value associated with it. Um, so with that, your units will counteract your farm's production to a certain extent, and if you have more unit consumption than you have farm production, you're going to have a negative value and you're going to lose grain over time and possibly use units. So you want to keep that, that value positive um, as much as you can. And you mainly do that by upgrading your farms. You can also do that with the Temple of Demeter, which you can build after signing an agreement. Um, this as well as... A, Various other buildings can only be made and upgraded after you've signed the proper agreement. But the Temple of Demeter, um, at max level of 20, your grain consumption is reduced by 89%. That's absolutely massive, and it is extremely important to get this um, upgraded pretty high, especially if you plan on having a large army. Um, the other three similar buildings to the Temple of Demeter that give you a percentage gain um, are the Temple of Hermes, which is free to upgrade, and at level 6 it will give you a 25% production boost to timber and bronze. You have your Temple of Hephaestus, that will increase your um, bronze production value by 10% at max level, and finally you have your Temple of Pan. Uh, at max level this will give 10% to your timber production. So all these buildings are good to build and upgrade once you've signed the proper agreements um, to make sure you're maximizing your resource production. Um, also, along with these buildings, you have your granaries and your warehouses over here. Um, you can have three of each, and upgrading these allows you to hold more of the respective resource. Um, your granaries, obviously, they hold grain, and your warehouses will hold your timber, bronze, and denarii. Denarii is produced over here at your Argentarium, and you tra basically you trade resources and time to produce denarii. Denarii is used like bronze and timber, um, but is used to make units that you cannot make with bronze and timber. So it's good to have some of that too, especially if you're building a lot of units. After this, we'll just go from left and right. We'll talk about the Tholos. The Tholos in combination with the oracle is going to allow you to um, locate colonies. Um, colonies, once you attack them and you defend them, you can collect resources, drachmas, denarii, or artifacts. So if you have a, a big army and you're looking for that extra little boost, this is very good to have. After this, we have your embassy. Your embassy, at max level, you will have six allies. Um, these allies are players that you're friends with. Uh, units move faster, resources move faster between you and the others. Um, so if you if you trade with somebody often or you defend them often, it is very good to have this maxed out. Next we will talk about your academy. This is where you're going to be using your scrolls. Um, there are various uses for scrolls, such as um, speeding up unit production time for each individual unit, um, gaining extra combat experience, and reducing grain consumption. Um, there are a lot of things here, and it is good to check those out and get those maxed out as soon as possible. I will be doing another video on 
what you should be doing with your scrolls to maximize your time. Um, next we have the stables. Uh, you can build this pretty early on in the game. This is where you're going to be building your cavalry units. At first you will only be able to build scouts, um, but after you sign more agreements you will be able to build the stronger cavalry units. Next we have your oracle. This is going to allow you, in combination with Tholos, um, to discover colonies. And it's also going to allow you to discover Persian positions which you can attack and receive units and resources back from. Um, at max level, it uh, increases your search range quite a bit for colonies. Um, basically, this is going to allow you to see colonies that are farther away from your city. After that, we will go down to the Acropolis. Um, the Acropolis is where you hide your units, so if you're logging off or if you don't want your units to be attacked, you'll want to hide them in there. You'll pretty much want to keep your offense in there all the time. As well as being able to hide your units there, it also protects a certain amount of resources. So if you're raided and you have under the Acropolis capacity, you're going to keep all of your resources. If you have over, um, you will lose, depending on how much you have over and your values of which resource, you will lose um, down to, or possibly down to, your uh, Acropolis capacity. After that, we will go to the barracks. The barracks is where you're going to build your heavy, heavy infantry units after discovering, or uh, after signing the proper agreements to build all of these units. After this, we have the Hall of Heroes. The Hall of Heroes is where you're going to be able to summon free units. They're not too strong, but they're good to have. Um, depending on um, these down here, um, you can have up to 25 per day. Um, and basically, for every friend you have that is playing, that has played the game or is playing the game, you'll be able to summon a hero for them, and um, those units will be yours, and you can use them however you like. After that, we will go down here to the infirmary. The infirmary is going to be an easy place to revive your units that you've lost, and also it has a nice little feature. <clears throat> At max level, level 6, the infirmary will allow you to revive 10% of any units lost at your city for free. Um, to clarify, when you are attacked at your city um, and you lose units, you will revive, be able to revive 10% of those lost units for free. If units die any other way other than at your city, you will not be able to revive them for free here. After this, we will go to the Hall of Xena. Um, this is going to be where you uh, invite your friends to play the game and you will um, get rewards accordingly with how many people play and how many people level up to level 15. Uh, there are some good bonuses there, so if you have friends that don't play the game and you want them to play the game, go ahead and invite them and uh, maybe you'll get lucky and they'll level up to 15 or higher. After this, we have the infantry camp. This is where you're going to be able to build your light infantry. These will be the early units in the game. And once again, as with the other buildings, uh, you must sign the proper agreements to be able to build those units. Um, where do we want to go next? Let's go to the Agora. The Agora is going to increase or reduce the amount of time it takes to build or upgrade buildings. So it's pretty good to get that maxed out. After this, we have the Euphoret, or the Foret. And this is where your um, your articles for agreements. So in order to sign an agreement, you have to have all of the proper articles. And this is where you're going to be able to track those articles to see which ones you have. Um, and you'll be able to see what you still need. When you upgrade this building, it increases the speed at which you discover and upgrade agreements. So it's good to have that pretty high. Um, let's go to the Sanctum here. The Sanctum is going to be where all of your... Um, why is this uh, dropping my mind here? <laughs> in Nords, it's called Elixir. Um, <clears throat> in this game, I believe... No, it's not called Elixir. In Nords, what am I saying? It's Elixir here. Uh, this is where you're going to have your Elixir. You will be able to get these chests through various ways. Open them and um, get these Elixir items. You can upgrade them here. And you can put them into effect here. Uh, these seem like pretty small bonuses, but especially if you have stronger units and a lot of them, um, these low percentages, and they will get higher over time, these percentages actually do matter quite a bit. 
And if you upgrade this building, you're going to be able to use elixirs of a higher level. After this, we've touched on that, we'll go to the armory. The armory is where you're going to be able to make your phalanx units. Once again, just like the other unit buildings, you have to sign the proper agreements before you can build this and build these units. After this, we have the Argentarium. This is, we've already talked about the Argentarium. What am I saying? That's where you get your Denarii, of course. All right, go over to the final side of the map. We have your lighthouse here. This is going to increase your galley speed. Your galleys can be used to trade articles and or send resources to other players. Upgrading this will make them move faster, so if you're trading with somebody who's not an ally or in your coalition, this is the way you want to do it because it's going to make them move a lot faster. Your harbor, uh, this is going to increase your galley capacity, so if you want to send more resources at once, this is where you're going to want to, this is the building you're going to want to upgrade in order to do so. We have the port up here. Um, this is basically like a trading post. You can see um, offers that other players have offered up to trade resources. You can also trade your articles here. And finally, this is where you track your galleys. Loaded galleys are galleys that you have put up a trade offer, so they're waiting for the trade offer to be accepted. Galleys in transit, exactly what it says. It shows galleys that are coming to you or going away from you towards somebody else. When you upgrade this building, um, it increases the amount of galleys you can have up to a maximum of 20. So if you send a lot of resources or trade a lot of resources, this is a building you're going to want to upgrade along with the harbor um, to maximize the amount that you can send. And last but not least, we will come here to your war council. This building is not upgradable, but this is where you can track what units are at your city, um, what colonies and other players you have sieged. This is also where you'll track your garrisons. So you, if you have troops sitting in another player's city or at a pantheon, this is where you'll see them. Uh, you can track your units here as well, incoming units, outgoing units. And this is also where you're going to have your contacts, uh, friendlies, enemies, all that kind of stuff here. And I think that should be everything. Um, oh, we can talk about the towers. The towers here, as well as your gates, um, these are going to provide like a passive defensive bonus uh, to your city, and you can buy and upgrade these. Um, you can buy them in the, the market, and you can upgrade them after you have uh, discovered the necessary agreement, or signed the necessary agreement for each level. I think that will conclude this guide. Have a good day.